Hey guys, welcome back. It's Redox. Thanks again for joining me here with another video. And I've been trying to play test the Tick Tank once again because I think the Tick Tank is a wonderful unit. But unfortunately, it costing 80 crystals and having a lower base health than a Scorpion Tank makes it less versatile. The Scorpion Tank is only 60 crystals, has more health, and is extremely mobile. One of the biggest problems with a Tick Tank is that it has to burrow underground. And then it's got to unburrow when it's got to move. And also while it's not burrowed, it doesn't have that additional 75% bonus reduction damage. So it takes a significant amount of damage. And because it has a lower base health than a scorpion tank, the tech tank cannot survive very well while it's on the move. You ideally want to position it in a way where the tick tank is burrowed and it's going to take 75% less damage, which is great. When it's burrowed, it's extremely strong, very tough. And it's a tank that's very, very hard to kill. But when it's not burrowed, that's when it becomes a problem. Personally, I think the Tick Tank needs a reduction in the Tiberium Crystal cost from 80 to 70. Because I don't. I think the Tick Tank is a little bit too expensive. The Giga Cannon, for example, at 80 crystals is fine. Because the Giga Cannon is a very strong 2 tile range unit. But the Tick Tank, I think, is a little bit weaker than the Giga Cannon. So it should be costing it about 70 crystals. And that's, I think, how we make this unit right. But anyways, let's take a look at this first game here. It's going to be me versus Sandpaper from a bunch of dads gaming. And he's got a slightly higher level than me on his units. He's also max trained most of his units here. So he does have slightly the uh, level advantage. And also he does have a unit advantage because he does have the Zone Trooper and the Wolverine uh, from the Tech Lab here as well. Alright, so let's take a look at the first game here. And I've got Commander Xana as always, because, you know, there really wasn't a nerf on her, to be honest. And we've got, not Colonel Jackson this time, we've got Lieutenant Strongarm from my opponent's side. He's got a barrack opening, standard rifleman missile squads, and he goes for a rifleman real fast here. And I've got a War Factory opening, as you guys saw in the initial, uh, initial look here. I've got the buggy opening, which is a great scouting unit for me. I see that he's got a Rifleman, I'm expecting that Missile Squad, I wanted to see if he had a Double Harvester. So I'm just gonna kill off that Rifleman in the middle, there in the middle launch pad. I'm gonna get a Laser Squad up, which was kind of a mistake. I actually uh, created a missile, a Laser Squad here, because I wanted to kill his Harvester. But I realized, hey, you know what, I'm probably gonna have to contest for these launch pads here instead. So I go for a Flame Squad, because he's got a Rifleman. So He's gonna bring, build, start building riflemen to block off my laser squads anyway, so I was gonna have to, uh, you know, you compete with him here and kill all his infantry units with my flame squads. And that's what I do, I build a whole bunch of flame squads, but he's got a pit bull coming out here, which I do see at this point. And this is my chance to bring out my tick tank. So, like I said guys, tick tanks are extremely strong while burrowed, but while on the move, they will take significant amount of damage. And that is one of the issues with the Tick Tank. So you can already see almost half of the health of my Tick Tank is gone. And I've got to unburrow it again to make it move. So the Tick Tank is quite immobile. But with Xana's fanaticism, the unit can be very, very fast moving. And I've almost controlled the launch pad here. I just built a couple more Tick Tanks here because he's going for Fred Tanks and Pit Bulls. I captured the first missile because you can see how strong that Pit Bull is. You saw in the middle launch pad, it took forever for that Pit Bull to kill, even at low health. So when it's burrowed, taking less 75% 75, 75 less damage is huge. You can see how little that damage Pit Bull does when my Tick Tank gets burrowed. Even though the Tick Tank does take a lot of damage initially, and it's extremely weak while it's moving. You know, when I boost this unit up here with Oxana's movement speed buff here, uh, it almost got two-shotted by a Predator tank there, just, just to let you guys know there. But um, I quickly got it out of the way with Oxana's boost, and I started killing his Harvester. And while it's burrowed, it takes very, very little damage. So you can see his Missile Squad cannot kill my Tick Tank very fast. Look at how many missiles it's got to fire, even though it has like one-fourth or one-fifth health remaining. Normally it would have died a lot quicker, but that 75% reduction in damage is huge. I'm gonna constantly build tick tanks because I know he's going for just predator tanks, and and you know tick tanks are actually pretty good at killing harvesters as well, just because they are pretty much the same as tanks, but they're tick tanks. They burrow underground, but the missile is important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building attack bikes to quickly get units across to the launch pads, and I build one air tower here to get a banshee up, boosted up by Xana because I know he's got predator tanks, and the tick tanks, although they're good. 
Um, because he has a Predator Tank already on the launch pad, if I move my Tick Tank to it, my Tick Tank will most likely get two shot and it will die. So Tick Tanks are very strong when they're burrowed. And you can see his Predator Tank had to just bypass my Tick Tank there in the middle launch pad here with a missile. He couldn't he could not kill my Tick Tank fast enough, so he just decided to move his tick tank, uh, Predator Tank to the launch pad. But at this point, reinforcing with my Banshee real fast here won me the game. But you can see Tick Tanks, once again guys, are very strong while they're burrowed, but they're very weak while they have to move. And also, the time that the time it takes for them to unburrow is also a little bit of a problem. So you really have to watch out how you position the Tick Tanks. Once again, you really want to just have the Tick Tank sitting there and have your opponent come at you instead of you moving your Tick Tank to them. But I still think the Tick Tank needs a, a buff by reducing its cost from 80 to 70 crystals just because 80 crystals is a little bit too much to pump out a tank unit like this, which is fairly good, but it's not as versatile as Predator or Scorpion tanks. All right, this will be the second game I'll show you guys. It's against my opponent Sedgefield from Otis Misfits. It's a not opponent. He's got Jade Ed as, as his commander, and he's got the uh, attack by Kim Buggy opening with four Temple of Nod units. The very scary units like the Rock Worm and the Basilisk is in that build, and their levels are fairly high. So it's going to be a challenging match once they get out on the battlefield. But of course, I don't know if my opponent has those units. And I actually bring the Widowmaker in this game, replacing one of my units. But anyways, I go for a Harvester. Now, this is one of those maps where your Harvester can get rushed very easily just because of the way the Crystals are positioned. And my opponent certainly could have started off into a No Harvester, can buggy attack by Grush, and that would have done very well if I had only Infantry units from the start. But I have a War Factory build, and I see that he's got an attack bike. I don't know if he has a Double Harvester yet, but I didn't see it initially. He doesn't have it, so... You know, at this point, I see his attack bike rolling down, so I kind of want to protect my Harvester from his. He's got the advantage of me, however, because he's got level 10 attack bikes. And when you're fighting attack bikes against attack bikes, um, you definitely don't want to move your attack bike in first, just because if you do, their attack bikes will fire their rocket volleys first, and it'll take out one bike, and you'll only get two uh, rocket bikes off of your two remaining attack bikes. So it's very difficult to fight attack bikes with just attack bikes, especially when your bikes are lower on the level. So I go immediately for a Tick Tank here, and you'll see just how strong the Tick Tank is here. Now, initially it took a lot of damage while it was a burrow, but when it's burrowed, three attack bikes, even though they're surrounding my Tick Tank, they don't do any damage at all. So that 75% damage reduction is actually huge while your tank is unburrowed. Or, or sorry, while your tank is burrowed, not unburrowed. He does finish off my tick tank there, and he gets a double harvester. He fires one jade crystal here, and I was like, wow, he spent a lot of crystals for that. But I should have kind of known he had a double harvester at this point, because if you have a double harvester, you can use your commander power uh, you know more frequently just because you have enough of the economy anyways so anyways going back to the launch pad contest here I'm gonna get a couple more attack bikes up here I still have no clue that he has double harvesters and I should have scouted him you know definitely not scouting caused me a big trouble this whole time I thought he had a single harvester and he didn't I didn't suspect any temple of Nod for some reason so I'm gonna just get my Tick Tank up here and I'm gonna control that launch pad. He's got a Temple of Nod and he's got a Basilisk coming up. And the missile's almost done and boom, I see the Basilisk, Basilisk here uh, right off the bat. But the Tick Tank when burrowed takes not as much damage once again from the Basilisk. So that's the other good, great thing about Tick Tanks is while they're burrowed because they take so little damage, you can have them sit on the launch pad and they won't die as quick so you will have a better chance of capturing the missile. And he fires another missile here at my Banshee. This time I dodge it because Banshees are fast and moving. He sends one Rock Worm. Now he stops his Rock Worm. He almost kills my Harvester here. And he's more paying attention to the top. I kill one of his Harvesters. He's trying to take out my Tick Tanks and my Attack Bikes at the top here. His Rock Worm barely survives. He goes underground. And there's kind of no way I can sur I can uh, let my Harvester live. Because as soon as that Rock Worm unburrows from the ground, it's going to kill my Harvester. Now he's going to go for a ton of Cyborgs at this point. Losing that Harvester was really bad because I just gave him 100 Crystals, right? And when somebody has Temple of Nods, you definitely don't want to give him that many Crystals. Anyways, my opponent doesn't rebuild another Harvester here. He just keeps going for Cyborgs here. Thinking that I've just got War Factory units, Tick Tanks, and Banshees. But I'm going to go for Flame Squads. I'm going to switch it up because, of course, you want to counter your units. And Flame Squads are very good against Cyborg. Missile's almost done here. And 
had I just captured the missile here, you know, the game would be easy and it'd be done. He's got a Confessor up here. But two Flame Squads, you know, they're going to actually take out Confessors as long as you focus fire on the Confessor with your double Flame Squads here. And I'm doing a pretty good job. So I pretty much kill all of his infantry units here. He gets one missile off my Flame Squad, which was so good on his part. Had I moved my Flame Squad just out of time there, I would have won this game. Because those two cyborgs would have died. The missile would have not gone to his side. He would have not been able to tile block with his faster moving cyborgs. I would have won this game at this point. But because that Jade Catalyst missile landed on my Flame Squad onto the right hand launch pad, the game prolonged. And this is bad for me. Now he goes for a double harvester here at this point, which was a questionable move just because there isn't there isn't too much crystals on the field anymore at this point. He's pretty much farmed out. One of his harvesters is just sitting there doing nothing. And I still have a chance to come back at this game. His Confessors, even though they're strong, like I said, you can use two Flame Squads, Focus Fire on one Confessor, and it will die. But his Confessor does prevail on the right hand launch pad. Takes out both my Flame Squads there. And uh, I just keep going for more Flame Squads. And that's kind of what I should have done. And maybe a Flame Squad and, and Banshees. Now he lands another missile, which was, which was again, bad, bad on my part. I should have dodged it. This is where I make another mistake here. I should have moved my Banshee just onto a right hand launch pad. But I sat my Banshee there for some reason, just waiting for his Rock Worm. And I didn't focus on capturing the launch pad. The, top, the right left hand launch pad was fine. The Flame Squad would not die to his attack bike. But I should have moved my uh, Banshees to the right hand side, and I would have won. This is a game I made. I made some crucial mistakes. And I definitely could have turned this game around. It would have definitely gone into my favor, but I was just making the wrong moves. And this will be the final match we'll take a look at. I took out the Widowmaker and replaced it with the Laser Squad once again here in this build. It's exactly the same build though with a Tick Tank. And my opponent's got two infantry units here. He's got the Hammerhead and he's got three Tech Lab units. He has the Titan, Zone Trooper, and the uh, Disruptor. So, you know, he's got Dr. Liang. So when I see Dr. Liang's I immediately know that he may go for double harvesters. Now, this is another map where bike rushing on your opponent is a good idea, and that's what I do. I immediately go for bikes. I, he has double, he has Dr. Liang, and the crystals are all in the center of the map. He goes for a missile squad, and he knows now that I've got an attack bike rush going on for him. I build another attack bike, but I've got a pretty good control at this point, and I'm pretty fairly confident about killing this harvester. Um, as long as I move around my bikes here, it's going that harvester is gonna die and yes it does i got one more rocket off i didn't even need a third bike there and that was good on my part now i go for a barrack and i built a flame squad that's what i do immediately because i know he's gonna try to kill my harvester you know when he's got three missile squads and he's probably very ticked off that i actually got the attack bike rush pulled off on him and my flame squad boosted up with Xana. it's just gonna start ripping those missile squads apart and he almost gets my harvester here but uh, I do save it in time with my flame squads here. He goes for double harvesters, and that's what a lot of these players do. Because you know what? At this point, he might as well. And he's got three tech lab units, so his army is very reliant on those tech lab, uh, on the tech lab units that are that should be coming out soon. But anyways, I go for more attack bikes because I have to stop his economy as fast as I can. I boost my attack bike with Xana. That's really how you want to play against tech lab or Temple of Nod units or double harvester players. Because if you let this guy farm you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. I kill a second Harvester. He kills one of my Harvesters, which was unfortunate because now I gave him 100 Crystals and we're kind of even now. Um, had I saved my Harvester, I would have been in a better spot. So now I start going for the Missile. I build one Tick Tank and I try to roll my Flame Squad and the Tick Tank towards the top because I want to kill another Harvester. But he's got a Titan coming out because after killing one of my Harvesters there, he had enough Crystals. So I move my Tick Tank to the top because I want to once again take out another uh, Harvester. He's trying to capture launch pads at the same time. And before my tank even burrows in the ground, it gets one shot by a Titan. So you really have to watch out. A, a tick tank will die to a, a, a Titan immediately if it does not burrow in time. I boost, he, I boost uh, my tank up right to the top as quickly as I can. I escape from the Titan. He kills another Harvester, so that's good for him because of course Tech Lab players want more Harvesters. I take out his Harvester as well. And I just spam attack bike. I get the first missile on him. I just need to get one more missile. And I don't build a, 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 a harvester yet because his titan is on my side of the field. It's a big problem. I should have built banshees at this point. And once again, another tick tank goes down to that uh, titan. And I do end up killing his harvesters on his side, however. 
So I'm in a bit of a troubled spot. He sees my Harvester. He sees my Tick Tank going up to the top. That Titan is one of the biggest veins right now uh, of my Tick Tank and my Harvester. But with Xana's boosted ability, it makes it out of there just in time. And my Tick Tank is burrowed. And I try to kill this Titan while the Tick Tank's burrowed. So while it's burrowed, the Titan will actually uh, two, two or actually three shot it here. So Tick Tick is very, very buff when it's uh, when it's burrowed. You can see that once again, guys. But eventually it does die as Dr. Liang's healing drone keeps that Titan alive. And it's it's beating the firing rate of my Banshee, even though my attack fight gets a rocket off in it. The Titan is so beefy with that Dr. Liang's healing drone. It still kills my Harvester in the end, which really sucks because that's... Once again, more crystals for him, but Missile's almost done, and I've got super fast moving units like Banshees, and I try to tile block him here with my laser squad, which is what I do, which is great on my part, and uh, he tries to get a hammerhead quickly there to the middle launch pad, but I win the game here, guys, but you can see a Tick Tank taking three shots, three shots while it's burrowed against the Tick Tank, that's, uh, sorry, a tick, the Tick Tank was the one that took three shots against the Titan, when it burrowed and that's that's pretty insane so anyways you guys can see that tick tanks are totally viable right now even though they do cost a little bit more than i think they should i still think they should get a slightly lower cost to make them a little bit more viable uh but anyways let me know what you guys think about the tick tank i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys next time